Hello everyone, this is Kumar here. I'm again back with another Wednesday Talks on the mainframe. Last time I was discussing about uh, use cases of a COBOL program used in a banking projects. So this time I thought like let me uh, share something different. So we will take one of the use cases that we discussed uh, last time and uh, based on that use case so I'm going to write a COBOL program and what are the steps I'm going to take uh, will convert that use case into a COBOL program and I'm going to explain what are the steps that are involved in this okay let's go ahead and get started okay so this is the different use cases that we have seen in the last uh, video that I have uploaded if you haven't watched my that video uh, just go back to the previous Wednesday talk sessions and you can just watch it so I have explained everything about the uh, use cases of a uh, COBOL program that are used in a banking projects of all these things. Okay, now I'm going to pick one use case that is customer record management, and I'm going to, I'm going to write a simple COBOL program for it. Okay, okay. So now before I move on to the COBOL program, let's understand one thing here. So whenever a task is assigned to write a, I'm talking about the new COBOL program that you would be working on within a projects. Okay. The first important thing that you need to understand from the requirement is what is the input? What is the input that you would be receiving uh, for that specific program that you are going to write? And what is the expected output? What is the expected output? Let's say uh, your requirement is to uh, generate a, some one some specific report related to the account statements. So total number of uh, withdrawal uh, done for that particular day of a specific customer and the total number of deposits done for that uh, specific week or day or month uh, for the specific customer. I just wanted to consolidate everything and uh, give the uh, debits and credits balances in the report. So that's my requirement. Obviously, what we need to understand here is we need to know from what are the inputs. So whether am I going to get the input uh, from the flat file or from the database or uh, or from the VSAM files. So we need to understand the source from where we are going to get that. And we at the same time, we, we need to understand are we going to get the copybook structure or the layout of that input 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 file that we are going to uh, receive right so without having the layout or the structure of the input file you cannot work you cannot work right so that is the first most important thing that we need to know yes as we know that uh, i'm going to generate a report so that uh, you got all these things. What are the different sources uh, I'm going to receive and uh, the copybook and uh, or sometimes they, they may not be any copybook provided, but you need to create your own copybook in that case. Uh, so the business users, uh, they would be giving you a spreadsheet. So wherein you have all the details related to uh, the input layout that was given if it is a 80 bytes file so each byte what it represents those that information need to be provided without that you cannot understand that raw data so that is the first most thing if it is a db2 table you will definitely have the structure of the table so you can easily understand if it is a vsam file then again you need to have the layout uh, given or provided okay so that's the first to most important thing and you know the input is given you know from where the input is coming so now you need to understand what are the input fields or what are the input information that i need to capture right so as i said my requirement is to create the report so then uh, then you need to understand like uh, okay so that means if i have to create the report uh, related to the uh, summary statement of a specific customer so then definitely First, you got the uh, input file, and then you need to know the customer details layout. So that means when I talk about the customer, so you need to know you you are expecting to take the fields information as like customer name, address, 
address is not required right now so customer name should be there and the account number should be there so those fields you are going to capture so that is all input and also the transaction details so the transaction details it can be in a different file or it can be in the same file that you are fetching right so you you need to write down all those things right how many input files i am receiving okay customer details uh, may be in one file customer transactions it may be in one file right customer account number it may be in some other file right so all these so sometimes everything all data can be combined together and given as a one input and from there you can start writing the program or there may be a different files file when i say files it can be a flat file ps file or it can be a db2 file one input let's say customer account information you you may receive it from the ps file okay let's say transaction details you may be receiving from the db2 table uh, let's say customer account number it may be in the vizam file okay so these are the three different inputs you you have to read that data and then you have to write the program okay so so no, now you are clear about from where we are going to receive the inputs and what are the different files and what are the what is the layout of it right so then after that and before processing something before writing the actual logic you need to understand the output okay so now the requirement is to create the summary report of the day to uh, weekly transactions or monthly transactions or daily transactions and uh, create the report and okay and do some other things okay what is that okay so i'm going to create the report that's fine so where do i need to store this report do i need to send it to the printer to print that particular statement or do i need to store it in some uh, flat file with a gdg different versions i want i have to maintain or just do i need to copy it into the uh, ps file so what exactly i need to do so we need to be very specific or very clear about these output so when we are not clear about these output so whatever you write so that's not going to be correct right okay so we need, we, we need to understand that okay so from where, where you you want this output to go right so either the requirement can be like okay just send this file to printer okay that that may be the possible output one and there may be a requirement that that report he wanted to they wanted to store it in a gdg with a different versions okay so that they can see the historical data of previous versions on a it may be a 29 days or it can be a 30 versions that's been created so that uh, they can see the complete monthly uh data with a gdg base created i mean versions created or it can be just a flat file where we will be appending uh every day when the job runs when this cobol program is it, it's going to append to the existing report so that they can see in a single file and another thing is they wanted to create this file into the gdg base i mean gdg gdg file or ps file and then at the same time they want this output to be uh, stored in a archival system or it can they call it as a cmod system or it can be it depends upon the individual projects so way what kind of an a repository system or the archival system they are using it so that the business users can view this reports okay so there are different possibles or sometimes they may want to send this data to a different uh, uh, windows server so from there the process can happen in a different way okay so these are the various possible things right so now so we will fix to the mainframe thing so we our requirement is to write this report into a, a flat file i mean the ps file so that is the only requirement so okay uh, since we wanted to write the file uh, write the report into the ps file so you need to create the structure like how you want this data to be written so there may be a header there may be a footer there may be be alignments and everything right so you have to you have to align the structure and you will be creating a copy book related to the output structure and you need to know what is the length of that file so it's 80 bytes or what it is and then based on that so you'll be understanding that layout okay and now you are clear about what is the 
out expected output and you know you are clear about the expected input now that now the actual business logic comes the entire actual business logics you are going to and we call it as a black box so this is where so you are going to write the actual logic right so first you have to analyze or break down your task in this way okay now what is our uh, task so just create uh, just to, our requirement is to create the report so that uh, it can be sent for, for further processing right so from where you are going to fetch the data how you are going to fetch the data what are the uh, fields that i need to fill in and what is the do i need to uh, uh, what are the uh, different arithmetic operations that i am going to perform and are you going to copy the data temporarily into a, any kind of an a uh, workspace uh, variables or uh, you are going to loop something and what are the different perform operations that you are going to perform are you going to hit the table multiple times or are you and temporarily you'll be loading into some table and you'll be fetching the information so everything will come into the picture so all those business decision logic this can be taken care here so the why i'm why, why i'm showing these boxes so this is how you need to figure out uh, whenever you're writing the program and so that way uh, the program you you can write this right in a simple way okay so this is just an example i'm giving okay so and sometimes you will be given a flow chart so you can always refer the flow chart and uh, you can understand the steps so what the business requirement is okay so the next about the customer just I, i'm giving you a simple requirement uh, like uh, let's talk about since i'm taking the user use case of uh, customer account management so so all the requirement is given here okay uh, what is the requirement to assist customers in completing transactions so the following steps should be taken so this is the requirement let's say what is what is the first thing that we need to as i said input is the first thing right so accepting or reading the uh, customer details such as account number name and address so that is the first first input okay then display menu options that include deposit withdrawal balance inquiry and exit so this is some kind of an output that we will be displaying in initially okay while the user doesn't choose to exit follow the steps below if the user chooses deposits accept the deposit amount again the input update the account balance with the deposit amount display a success message if user chooses a withdrawal accept the withdrawal amount check if the withdrawal amount is valid and available in the account balance or if the if withdrawal is valid deduct the withdrawal amount from the account balance display a success message if withdrawal is valid display an error message if the user chooses to view the account balance display the account balance if the user chooses to exit then exit so this is a simple scenario so that can happen in the customer account management uh, a module so if you are working in a uh, on a banking projects this would be the best example i can say so these are the things that will happen okay so based on this information i am going to write a, a cobol program and, and i am going to show you that how it will be okay so as i said so you, if you may get the requirement in this way and you can also get a flow chart so with all these symbols you can see so and you can also better understand like what is the inputs what is the input expected input what is the expected output what will be the process or what are the different decisions that we need to take and and all those things so the complete flow chart would be given okay okay now let's uh, write this program okay since we know what is the input what is the output and all the requirements so uh, as usual the program starts from the identification division and you write all the working storage variables account number customer name customer address transaction type transaction amount and everything you will be writing it here and then procedure division so in procedure division so we will be writing all the different paragraphs and then we will move we will jump on to that specific paragraphs okay so perform accept customer details so it would jump onto the customer accept customer details paragraph and there we will be fetching it so once you have accepted so then what we are going to do we are trying to display menu and process until exit flag equal to y so this is a logic and then we are trying to display some the statement so in real time so you this is applicable for the cobol cics combination program so there wherein you are going to see a cics screens and but the logic would be 
the similar way that uh, I'm explaining now. Okay, so just uh, it is very simple example that I'm trying to explain here. Okay, so now uh, since when when you see this perform accept customer details, so it would jump onto this specific paragraphs and you can see uh, the list of information like what are the so you are it is asking for the account numbers accept the number account number then enter customer name and so on and this logic you would be writing so if it is a cis combination program so you would be writing a different logic there okay and then finally you are trying to display so if it is a cis as i said so you'd be sending map map set okay so then uh, a menu item need to be displayed so this would be the screen that would be displayed and then user will be entering uh, what option to be selected so uh, once the user select the specific option so we, we are going to evaluate if it is one so go perform a display uh, we are going to perform de deposits uh, paragraph or if it is a two perform withdrawal if it is a three perform balance inquiry if it is a four exit so we are breaking down the program into a very simpler way so that if you're writing today and you work for several years and you left the organization some other person would come so it would be easier for the readability right so you have to make sure so you're writing in a proper way right. okay when other display invalid option then please try again okay so this everything would be in the evaluate statements okay now deposits so now we have the paragraph user has selected one so it would go to the perform deposit so then you have the deposit paragraph coded so you have all the statements related to the deposit similarly for withdrawal and similarly for the balance inquiry that's it right so this is how uh, the simplest way to write the uh, cobol program and this approach you can follow for any requirements that you'd be working in the cobol programs okay uh, this is what I, wa I wanted to share so we have taken one use case and we wrote a uh, flow chart i can say like uh, the cobol program out of this so i mean this is what happens in the real time so whenever it can be banking project it can be insurance or it can be any other project so that's the i feel like this is the best approach to follow so if you are writing any cobol program or the same thing applies if you're working if you're trying to enhance something to the existing program or if you are trying to add a new feature or if you are if you are in a maintenance project and you wanted to look at the program so that's the best approach to do it okay Thank you so much for watching this. If you do like this, give a thumbs up and give your comments to like and share. Okay. Have a wonderful day.